Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 2 of Rustic Waters. I starved to death. Apparently there's something in this pack where if you're just like AFK, it uh, will slowly drain your hunger, and if you're AFK for long enough, it'll kill you. Um, whoops. Oh well, in the time that I spent AFK, all of our uh, strainers have gone through their meshes, so we're going to need to make a new set of meshes for them. Let's do that real quickly. As before, I'm running two regular meshes and two dense meshes, mostly because I don't actually know which one I need more materials of. Let me empty out my inventory a bit real quick too. So what I've been doing is the uh, stuff that comes out of this these strainers, I've just been storing in chests down here until I have, you know, probably drawers or some other better solution. But um, yeah, we're starting to gather a lot of stuff like this sand, dirt, uh, gravel. This can all be sieved. Um, so let's take this with us because we can turn this into you know all the various metals and and other good stuff uh, i also rearranged our or i guess our sluices not sieves so that they can be a little easier to use let me demonstrate that so we need a few slots on our hot bar for buckets we still need buckets of water as usual but then we can fill up i think this is six sluice boxes each hold you know 10 uh gravel or whatever and then you put water in the top one and it'll go through all six of them and you see when items show up you can put more um more gravel in and then once again put water in the top one so this process uh little eventually like the items that come out get picked up by this upper and transferred to the chest to the hopper to the upper to the chest to the hopper to the upper to, you get the point all the way until they end up down here so it takes it like a, a good amount of time um to go you know the entire way but it'll eventually transfer all the items to the end so you just have to fill we, we're still filling them by hand but at least all the items are moving to the end automatically and i set that up because we have a fair bit of sluicing to do is that even a verb um, you know, I have to run a lot of stuff through these, so I figured I totally put water in there before. Oh, you're allowed to put water in before you put the dirt in. It's good to know. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna go through all of this just so that we have a fair bit of metals going forward because we're gonna use a lot of it today. I went through one inventory worth of stuff. There's still plenty left. However, um, we can see there's lots of stuff in the final chest already and there's still a bunch of materials working their way down the chains here so uh yeah once you're done you know you gotta let the system settle i guess or you can help it along by just picking up all the materials and dumping them into the final chest <clears throat> all right so this is i think just about everything in here is a yield from you know one inventory of mixed uh gravel sand and dirt um Cool. So now we have to smelt it all. Looking at this stuff, there's, uh, if we, eventually anyways, we can build a sieve, which uh, can, you know what, let's, let me see if I can build this right now. Iron plate, I need crushing table. Yay. Yeah, I think we can do that. Let me try. Just kidding. After looking it up again, the uh, sieve actually uses RF. So we're probably getting ahead of ourselves to try to make this or it uses power you know magnetic craft power so um yeah for now we we won't uh we won't sieve it we can just you know as we saw before there's no way to or double it so we'll just cook these directly into ingots um i'll grab a couple different types i don't know which ones we'll need now and uh, i upgrade our furnaces to a couple of these prismarine furnaces they uh have they cook two stacks at a time and have, you know, buffered input and output, which is nice. So it uh, looks like we need a bit more fuel. I think at this point we can also start burning, like, full-size fuel. Because I'm no longer processing, you know, single items and I'm not lacking in fuel. Um, Alright, so let's go back to the quest book. I knocked out a few very easy ones here. This is just telling us that um, when you die, your gear loses a fair chunk of their durability. And that's why all my gear is damaged from when I starve to death. All right, cool. Good to know. Um, I made a hearthstone, which I put somewhere. It's 
much like the Hearthstone in uh, World of Warcraft, you right click it and uh, no, I canceled it. I didn't cancel. Oh, it's charging. All right, so you see that the item bar charging to green in the. There we go. Anyways, uh, yeah, you right click it. It tells you. It's oh, it has a cooldown as well. All right. Anyways, um, I'm not. It, it's uh, you know, a cool way to teleport home. My point. Um, let's see what else in here. Moving on, one thing I definitely want to make is this mechanical toolbox. So let's pin it. What it does is when you craft in here, say we're crafting, I don't know, vines. Is that the recipe? Is that the recipe? Uh, oh, that, that needs water. Hold on. Uh, let's craft chests instead then. Let's see, wood. So if we're crafting something in here and you see how our tool is almost out of durability, but once it's out of durability, we can't craft anymore. Uh, what the mechanical toolbox will do is automatically ugh, automatically resupply the uh, tools to you know attached tables, which sounds pretty nifty and uh, doesn't look that expensive. So let's make one. Also, I don't think this basic workshop does anything, so uh, I'm going to replace it with the mechanical toolbox. All right, one mechanical toolbox. So we'll put it here. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but. I suspect it just has an inventory. Yeah. And then I guess if we put a, make a few of those like iron knives or whatever they're called. There, we'll do five. I suspect if I put four of these in here, one of these, oh, okay. It just shows the inventory here. Um, all right, am I almost out of any of these tools? I'm not. Uh, I guess we'll just craft a bunch of chests then and see what happens when that tool breaks. I'm, I'm just curious if it automatically refills the slot or if I still have to manually do it. But uh, we have plenty of wood, so I'll waste some on chests. Chests are one of those things you'll always use more of in Minecraft. All right, so it looks like it just shows an inventory here of tools, but we can manually restock. I can work with that. Next up, the quest wants us to make a tank and funnel. This seems like a way that we can... A funnel looks like it's a combination hopper and bucket filler. A funnel will automatically siphon water from the tank above and fill empty buckets sitting in an attached chest. Alright, so make those. There's a lot of tanks. Easy enough. And a funnel. All right. And since those use a couple of my buckets, I'm just going to make a couple more buckets. And this rewards me with a gold bucket, which sounds pretty interesting. It can basically, I think it's like four buckets in one. So like I can use, right? Yeah, that uses one bucket of water to run the sluice. Or uh, I can like if I put it in the furnace, it'll cook um, four buckets of water into purified water at once, which seems nifty. Uh, just looking at the mod, it doesn't even say it's from the more buckets mod. Yeah, there's a whole variety of buckets that hold different numbers of buckets. Like a diamond bucket holds ten. Ooh, only takes a handful of diamonds too. Um, and a blacksmith table. So maybe at some point we can investigate these uh, better buckets. But for now, having a gold bucket might be nice. When we're trying to make things like, uh, you know, our creosote oil and stuff. So what's next? Um, I'm trying to go easy to hard. Pipettes, it's probably just some glass. Does it have to be pink? No, it can be any glass. All right. Uh, is there any trick to making glass? Nope, you just smelt sand. Good deal. We smelt faster. Perfect. I do like having access to stuff like Acceleration Wand, Time in a Bottle, uh, even if they're not meant to be used for automation, which I feel like they kind of break automation in many ways. But when you're, you know, waiting for something to happen, it's just nice to have to hurry it along. Treasure chest. Ooh, plates. That seems nice. All right. Uh, the grindstone is probably the easier of the two here. I might 
have lied when I said that. No, okay. Let's make one of these. I need some sticks, some flint, some stone, and that's probably it. All right, so this, uh, it can't be used for doubling these ores, but it can turn ingots into dust. So I think for making like alloys and stuff, since we need dust, um, that's what the grindstone's for. And it needs a handle. Is that the recipe? Is that the recipe? Darn it. It's, it's a crank. Oh, it's made from treated six. This is what I get for using memory based on vanilla recipes. All right, treated sticks. Okay, get out of there, wood. Crafting is hard. Oh, it has to be in those two slots. All right, you got me, game. This is why I usually don't craft on camera. Anyways, um, now if we wanted to grind iron down for whatever reason, you, know, you put iron in there, you crank it for a while. You, I think the crank will break if you keep crank. So at this point, if I kept trying to crank it, it'll break eventually. So uh, don't over crank your handle for multiple meanings of that phrase. And here I am not looking at quest rewards and thus getting an extra crank. Whoopsies. Anyways, the water pump is the last and probably most useful of these last few items so it can pick up water i think what exactly does it do? place it right above a body of water and use a lever to give it a redstone signal it will fill adjacent tanks okay um i suppose we can probably use a timer of some sort to do it as well anyways fluid dials we place it from most fluid containers cool let's make it looks like it takes tempered glass lead how do you make tempered glass Burn, so you burn compressed sand. Ah, huh. cool mechanic. All right, let's try this. So it says you burn compressed sand for three seconds. Oh, would you look at that? Tempered glass. All right, I can I can accept that as a crafting mechanic. Um, and then some other stuff. I'll do that off here. And one water pump. So I suspect to use this, it said you place it above water. So I'll put it here as a little screw. I see. And then we have to give it a redstone signal. Um, all right, we'll use a lever for the time being. We'll get rid of this fence, I guess. So if I... Oh, it's a constant redstone signal, not a pulse. Okay. Um, and it says it fills nearby inventory, so it'll fill the tank. Cool. And uh, if I raise this whole setup by one, I can put the funnel, or even by a couple blocks. You know, I can just build this somewhere else then. I'll, I'll leave this water as our, like, jumping in water, and I'll build something else that'll be our, you know, filling water. Alright, it's gonna be a little cramped in here, but uh, let's see. If I jump up here, maybe you can see better. This should be picking up water. I think it's picking up water and automatically, yeah, dumping it into this tank, which has a funnel attached to it. Which means that buckets I place in here automatically get filled with water. Really cool. So now if I want, I can further, you know, set up like a furnace um, and yada, yada, yada. That automatically cooks this water into purified water. However, right now I can only move items. I guess I can move items sideways. Can funnels point sideways? Let me try. All right, two things I learned. First of all, funnels can point sideways. I presume they work while pointing sideways. Um, I guess... Testing that with full buckets isn't going to tell me anything. And secondly, uh, funnels don't count as full blocks, so they don't block the flow of water. Because without this piece of dirt here... Okay, that was a lie. Water was slowing out there earlier. Um, yeah, but it does fill buckets. Uh, it does block our expansion port here, but I guess that's fine. Anyway, from here I can use either hoppers or uppers to set up a automatic water smelter. So let me make another furnace, I guess, and we'll do that. One thing I need to test is, do these furnaces accept sided input? Or does side input become... Yeah, I think side input only for fuel. 
Well, that's not going to work. All right, so this is a somewhat obscure system, but uh, buckets that go into here will get filled. Um, I guess this doesn't filter, does it? Mm, Q. All right, I'll deal with that later. Um, anyways, and they eventually end up in here. If I have enough buckets, the buckets themselves will serve as a buffer. So I guess I'll let that... Yeah. I'll let that be the case. Anyways, uh, this I may as well power with tiny charcoal, so I need, I think it can hold 16 pieces at once, because we're only going to be smelting single items. Right, and then this can be an on-demand source of water buckets. So if I just craft a bunch of buckets up. Dash them all in here. No, that still doesn't fix the... Yeah, that still doesn't fix the uh, problem with it grabbing empty buckets. Hmm. And it seems, unlike, unless I can get some item conduits from a lucky treasure chest, they're uh, a little ways off. So we don't really have good filtering options for non-stackable items. Like if they were stackable, we could filter them with a, uh, you know, like a vanilla hopper filter. But uh, that's not going to work because these don't stack. So, oh well, uh, I'll make this better later in theory if i have it um eh, this is almost producing enough water for me to do that one second all right by supplying it with enough full buckets um it, i can make it so that if i put in a new bucket in the lower right corner at least it'll always get filled and it seems the uh upper always pulls from the top left down so uh this way if i you know use a few buckets for whatever reason okay in fact let's use some right now I take out four of these buckets you know it'll pull uh water buckets out of here as needed but um it won't end up like if i have to, if i have to give it more empty buckets now if i have to give it more empty buckets i can place these here and they won't get pulled out by the hopper um anyways made it awfully hard to get back here but uh that'll make this process slightly easier just slightly because my base is a mess. But I imagine we're going to want to fully automate this creosote process later. Um, I have it also right now that uh, when it's done, I can use this workbench here. The workbench is basically a uh, like the Tinker's crafting table. It retains its inventory. It unfortunately does not link to, to an adjacent inventory to show like it's... Uh, you know, an adjacent inventory to automatically pull items from, which is a shame, but I'll make do. And then now that I have these empty buckets, I can place them back here uh, if I wanted them to be filled with water. But I think I want to keep some empty buckets on me just by crafting and whatnot. So with that, we've now completed everything on the left side except the final one, which rewards a key. This is just uh, encouraging us to go down to the ocean floor and pick up some orange, pink, and cyan coral. So uh, I have, you know, bring as little as you need, right? Just in case you die. Um, and let's see if we can grab some. Hopefully we don't get eaten by a shark or something along the way. But uh, should be pretty safe here. Anyways, just I'll grab some of this coral. I may as well grab some of this coral reef too. And uh, I guess I've got enough colors of coral. We'll need some of this coral reef for various things, so I'll grab a couple stacks of it, or... Actually, I need oxygen. Turn back. Ooh, made it with 20 seconds to spare. I could have gotten a bit more coral while I was down there. Oh well. Um, I don't know, does this have any uses? I guess it's like effectively dye. Yeah, these are all... they have colored dyes in there. Or dictionary names. Alright. Anyways, that gives us the hub expansion key, which I think lets us... Uh, extend our base in one direction. I've been avoiding building on this wall mostly because this is the side that I intend to expand on. Oh cool. So it gives you like another uh, another section here. That's pretty neat. It's, they're like the, you know, Subnautica base sections for those of you that have played Subnautica. Alright, does this have additional expansions on it though? It doesn't. So if I want to expand further, I have to go to either one of the sides I've more or less blocked off or, you know, manually build the building. Moving on from that, I'll 
I'll stick to the uh, introduction tab until, you know, we've more or less finished it or done as much as we can. It wants us to bake a cauldron in exchange for a cow in a jar. That seems like a good deal. I think this is the, leading up to rats, who are, uh, rats is a relatively new and uh, pretty cool automation mod that uses, well, it uses rats to do things. So it's a cauldron. Nice. I assume we'll be using the milk from this to like feed and attract the rats. It'll build up a vat of milk for you, bucket it out for you some recipes. In this case, cheese. Fill a cauldron with milk and let it sit for a few minutes. It'll curdle into cheese, I see. So as far as I know, the cow in a jar does an auto output. So I'm stuck waiting for it to make a bucket of milk. It holds eight buckets internally, which I guess is enough for now. I don't know. Fluid transfer. What options do we have? We have cyclic, um, embers, immersive, and I'm sure Enderio conduits are here somewhere. Yeah, and Enderio. Uh, but these also, whenever possible, I love the Enderio option. Like I love Enderio conduits. They're, they they they. They make me very happy because you can run multiple conduits in one block space, but um, they also seem to be reasonably mid to late game. Ooh, interesting recipe. Anyways, uh, I'm going to wait for this cow to make a bucket of milk. While our milk curdles into cheese, let's work out. It sounds like, never mind, I'll, that was a lot quicker than I expected. All right, that gives us a rat upgrade. Sure. Oh, rats could be used to transfer items. Neat. You would need to lace the cheese with bits of... Okay, then. We'll drop some of the droppings upon death. Alright, I guess let's go uh, kill some wildlife, and it recommends I use our bow for that. Hello there, squid. I wonder how the arrows fly. They drop pretty quickly, as expected. There we go. That got us one. Alright, I'm going to kill some wildlife here, I guess. To help with the uh, underwater stuff, it recommends I drink this potion. And that does make a pretty big difference. I can actually see underwater. Wow. Not only that, I have water breathing, so I don't instantly die. And I see loot loot um hold on how do i i know this way i can turn off show liquids in uh that's one probe right like this uh let me go find it real quick here it is in the uh mod configs because i i know that it's water i'm curious what's under the water chest oh picks up the chest is it in the chest Oh, I think these are one of the chests you need keys for, maybe? So I guess I'll just bring it with me. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think we need keys to unlock this chest. All right, well, uh, back to hunting for wildlife. Another thing I have to be mindful of right above my levels is what appears to be a temperature gauge. If I, uh, rocket squid. If I get too far down and spend too long down here, soon it'll turn into like an icy icon, like that. And I think that's telling me that I'm getting cold. So I can't spend too long in deep water, is the point. I like killing these squids because these uh, turbo tubes are used to make the boolies brew, which is basically the only way I can see underwater for the time being. And I, I've still got a couple minutes on my buffs. I might have made a terrible mistake. I don't know if I'll make it back to base before I run out of oxygen. This is always my greatest fear in Subnautica 2, is not, you know, not making it to the surface. But no, it looks like this time I, uh, I'll have a little bit of air left. Whew. Air. <sighs> All right. So anyways, while I was down there, I got various things, a couple chests. Let me uh, see how I unlock these. All right, so there's various forms of keys, um, and I think you have to match your key to the rarity. So say the skull chest says it's scarce, I need a gold key. Let's try making one of these. Uh, I think there's also a quest line about it. 
let me claim that just because I've done that. Um, doo -doo -doo. Somewhere here. One of these quests is for it, I, I'm sure. Here we go. Pirates plunder. Treasures are discovered in the waters. You need keys. Each chest contain requires a certain key type, or you can try picking the locks. Keys cost more materials, but are guaranteed to open them. Locks picks can be breaking. Yada yada yada. Okay, so the quest wants a gold and a iron key. Let's start by making those. Looks like they're both made with this treasure tool plus a block of their respective material. Treasure, or rather, lock picks don't stack. So uh, when you get them, uh, like this quest rewarded 16 of them. When I got them, they just flew everywhere. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's some hiding around in the base still. Anyways, it looks like they can only open up to scarce quantity or quality. So I'll try opening this scarce chest with a lockpick. Does it not work? Uh, you just shift click it. There's no mini game or anything. Uh, it looks like it's 16% chance, so the odds are not terribly high. Ooh, that gave me lock. What does a lock do? I think it's just once a lock is off, yeah, you can get the items. And I don't know if the lock itself does anything, but it doesn't have uses. Cool. So that gave us, you know, a couple diamonds, an emerald, some iron and gold. I mean, I guess I won't complain. That seems like a good deal. Anyways, um, at that point it's empty, so uh, I don't know if that has any uses if it's empty. Does it say it's empty? It doesn't even say it's empty? I don't know. In any event, uh, let's move on to the big chest. So this chest, for one, I don't think you can pick it. I think the key will always break if you try to pick it. Um, and when you have it in your inventory, it'll say max locks three. So there could be up to three locks on it and up to 27 items in it. All right, let's figure out what the items are. Unfortunately, I don't think we can open it yet. It's a epic rarity, so we need a epic rarity key, um, which starts at Ruby. And I just, you know, we don't have, well, can I do this? Gold key, glowstone dust, Ruby. Yeah, I don't have rubies. Um, and it looks like you can get the keys from treasure or you want to do four diamonds, but I don't have a blacksmith's workshop. I can make a blacksmith's workshop and I have four diamonds. Eh? Sure. Let's see what's the worst I could happen. All right. This is definitely not the best way to use your first four diamonds, but we can break them into diamond chunks and then combine them with a ember crystal. Oh, are these? These are ember shards. Shoot, how do I turn ember shards into crystals? I hope you can. They're just like six to one crafting. Uh oh. Uh, nine to one, and it needs a chemist's workshop. Thankfully, we can make one of those too. All right, cool. I guess we're just uh, we're really diving deep into this rabbit hole here. Man, these UIs are absolutely hideous. Like, who thought this color scheme with this text was okay? Anyways, uh, ever crystals it takes purified water. Ah, we have a system that makes that. All right, so there's our ember crystal. Um, and then I just have to combine it with a diamond chunk and our hammer. This way. What does that do? Oh, that makes a diamond key. I don't need a diamond key to level is this rarity rare so yeah we need something better than rare we need epic all right so that should be able to open our epic quality chest it says up to three locks and this has up to three uses so i'm hoping i'm hoping that the one key can open the chest entirely one failed to un failed to unlock is it because it's open already no oh Oh, well, that's a disappointment. Now I can't unlock the chest because I'm out of diamonds. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I'm supposed to, like, look at the actual locks on the chest. So, uh, like, the one I popped off the front was uh, ruby. And these two locks are sapphire. So I need, I need sapphire 
locks sapphire keys to unlock that and to make a sapphire key i need either a sapphire or i need four emeralds um which i guess i can get from merchants ha huh. you know what hold on maybe it's best we save this for later when we have a bit more resources i'll uh i'll leave it here it's something we can look forward to in the future for now though let's um we'll continue down our uh cheesy ratty journey Anyways, let's see. I also completed a few quests along the line. I don't know if any of these I want to even bother with. Meh. Later. The next step then is to uh, make this funny cheese by mixing droppings in with regular cheese. And it says you place it on the ground and break it, I think. You may want to create an enclosure so the rat doesn't get away. Sure. Give me some uh, dirt. And we'll do it over here in our brand new expansion. I don't know if rats can climb. All right, so put that there and break it. That's not a rat. Well, that is a rat. Ah. Before we spawn the rat, though, we need to make sure we can tame it. And rats naturally tame with cheese. So. I think we can cut our cheese blocks into individual slices somehow. Yeah, in a workshop again. And the quest recommends getting 16, so I'll wait for 16 cheese before we try to tame. All right, Rat, it's time for you to come into this world and be my friend. How do I give you cheese? 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 Do I throw it? Oh no, I let him out. Oh no, I've done a terrible thing. Rat, come back here. Eat your cheese. I think if I get the smoke particles, it means it didn't tame. Whereas if I get uh, like heart particles, it tames. If it's like regular taming anyways. No, Rat, get back here. What are you doing? Cheese is this way. Jeez, you hungry, boy. There we go. So now he's tamed. All right. So once tamed, uh, I can... Oh, I can give him commands. He has different modes. He can wear equipment. I can upgrade him. I can shift right-click him to... Uh, wear him on my hat apparently and i think it's shift right click again to throw or shift left click what did that say it didn't say i know the quest mentioned it um you can set them down at your uh, shift right click in the air no not in the air enough there we go hello little friend anyways um let's wrap up this episode here we'll come back tomorrow and uh see what more we can do with our furry little friends here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.